Greetings, celestial travelers of the new Jerusalem. Happy two, 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 two. That's a lot of twos there. We have five twos, making a ten. Five ten. In the Taoist arts, we say five elements, ten organs. In the five five, make the ten. The five D, time is prophecy. All these prophecies are coming to fruition. We're seeing them almost every day now. New prophecies around the world. The manifestation of the symbolism of the ancient prophets, our guides and signposts along the way as we navigate through this unknown of the ascension process as a collective consciousness. We're seeing this come through in many ways. With these powerful energies coming in and these 2222 portals, this is today is the third of 10 2222 portals in a row from the 20th to the 29th. 29th being a leap day, quantum leap of consciousness. And these energies are building up. We're at the third of 10, which is the 44, accelerating, multiplying, activating our innermost guru, guide, teacher, and the light and the frequency, the resonance is guiding the way. So that is the path within, the kingdom of heaven within, through the emptiness, the stillness of the mind through the portal of the heart, the heart center, the still white magnetic light at the center, calling you home, calling you with the ohm, the, with the resonance, the vibration, the frequency. Many hear this as a ringing in the ears, a pulse, a vibration, a frequency. We say follow the sound back to the source, back to the silence, Back to the stillness, all sound emanates from the silence and returns to the silence. There was a book written by Carlos Castaneda titled The Power of Silence from his guru teacher, his shaman. Now, guru from ancient Sanskrit, this is from India. Sanskrit is over 3,500 years of history. Sanskrit's been traced back 3,500 years, so many people call these New Age terms they're actually really ancient teachings because, brothers and sisters, it's been said in the past, there is nothing new under the sun. There's refinements, there's evolution, there's changing. But most what people call new age, it's gotten a bad connotation among the collective that what people call new age are mostly ancient arts, very old, very ancient. Now what we call new earth, it's really not something that... You could call new, perhaps, but it's these old concepts that we've been talking about. The ancient might say pure land, the pure land. What is new about it or refined is the collective aspect of it. Now, individuals experience this paradise, this enlightenment, this awakening for thousands of years. What we're saying is part of this new earth, this new Jerusalem, the newness about it. The birthing about it is a collective experience. As far as we know, it's never been experienced collectively. Awakening or enlightenment or whatever name we want to give to realization of truth, of our highest self, our true self, our God self, cosmic consciousness. We're seeing this coming through on a collective level, meaning all human beings, all life and all realms coming to this self-realization or this inner realization or God realization, whatever name, Buddha, awakening, goes by, by many names. So some of these corrupted or conflicted dogmatic consciousnesses that still remain are trying to trick and scare those that are on the path. I see it every day. So I try to resolve these things for people by getting them to understand the meaning of words because the education system especially in the west has failed people i mean it's good if you want to learn how to read but when it comes to knowledge and that which is true or true meanings you really have to sit down and study yourself things such as linguistics which is the study of languages the study of words and etymology meaning the study of the origin of words and the way that the meanings have changed throughout history, meaning 
the evolution of language, Terence McKenna would say that all cultures are a fossilization of language, of words. So to really understand history and cultures and religions and these things, you really need to study etymology, uh, linguistics, the meaning of words, because they've been lost over time, lost in translation. But these things, when we understand, they can resolve things that are in conflict among, amongst the collective. So through these transmissions, I do my best to resolve things that I am seeing conflicted and people debating about. A lot of debates go on without true understanding or true realization of the true meanings, such as we were, use the word guru. Now, guru is from Sanskrit, Sanskrit over 3,500 years old meaning teacher or guide. And that comes through the Hindu and the Buddhist teachings and Jainism, the main religions out of India that originate in India. Obviously, they spread throughout the whole world. It was after World War II that uh, gurus such as uh, Paramahansa Yogananda, Shinryo Suzuki, uh, many of these Eastern teachers came to the West for a reason, for purpose, for this great awakening. They saw it coming, such as uh, Swami Sri Yukteswar, who was one of Pramahansa Yogananda's teacher in Kriya Yoga. Many people into yoga now um, don't know anything about the history. They haven't researched it. So it's part of the teachings of any art, any practice. doesn't matter what it is, spiritual, fine art. There's three different aspects when you train with a master or with a teacher, guru, so when I use the word guru, generally it's talking about a teacher or master from India, either Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism. Now if I talk about a master or teacher from China, I've trained with Sifus, S-I-F-U, Sifu meaning teacher, guide in Chinese. We use sensei in Japanese, sensei or roshi, R-O-S-H-I, master, teacher, guide. And these masters, teachers, guides, they had what's called disciples. And a disciple doesn't is not a religious connotation. A disciple is an ancient word that means a pupil, a learner, a person who learns from another, a student. But we think of disciples like the 12 disciples. Obviously, these they meant people that taught with a teacher, with a guru, someone that mastered an art and they learned from this teacher. So these things are to help resolve these dogmatic, programmed manipulations amongst man, putting people in fear of things that are unknown to them. And that's why we study, we learn the three aspects when you train with a master of any discipline. I've trained with Buddhist masters, Taoist, Hindu, Zen masters, uh, Sifu and the Taoist traditions. And the healing arts, the spiritual arts, the martial arts, like Sifu, Ching Feng Dao Shu, mean pure wind man of the Dao. And the Sifu transmits their knowledge to the student. So the three aspects of learning, of teaching, and we'll use the Zen Buddhist as an example. So there's three aspects to learning or practicing. There's always a trinity in every religious spiritual practice. So we have the scholarly aspect, learning from books, from lectures, from reading sacred texts, uh, parables, books, sutras, scrolls, whatever. The learning from the written word, which we become scholarly. So our Sifu says, don't become too scholarly. You know, it, it helps to understand as we're going through the process of learning and mastering an art. So the one aspect is the scholarly reading about, learning as much as you can about the history, about the teachers, about the languages, about the symbolism and the meanings of words and getting a foundation about it. And then we have the, the verbal that many of the teachings are from mouth to ear, the speaking from the teacher, which you won't find in any books or on, on the internet or m many times not even in the in videos and lectures and speeches from teachers because some things are only meant for the initiate, the student. 
And there's a reason for all this, which I'm not going to get into in this video. So we have the scholarly from the books. We have the verbal understanding and the interaction between teacher and student asking questions and the, the guiding through the, the confusion and through the conflicts. And then the third one is what we call mind-to-mind -mind transmission. And the mind-to-mind -mind is from master to student, the, when someone mastered an art. And this is mostly we see in the Eastern philosophies, such as the Buddhism and Hinduism. And it's mind-to-mind -mind through the heart or through the eyes, the doorway of the soul, the, the teacher, the guide, can transmit that Buddha awareness or that pure awareness. And we see this through the tutelage of the masters from the Buddha himself, transmit to his disciple, the Buddha awareness. So they pass it on, we call the patriarchs of Zen that brought that Buddha awareness through the understanding, through the teachings, through the practice. So obviously there's a most spiritual practices or something physical such as meditation or, or Tai Chi martial arts or some kind of physical movement or sitting practices, moving practices. Everything becomes the art. Everything we practice, we say Gong Fu, something that takes great effort to master. And the Chinese, the arts are all seen as Gong Fu. We have Gong Fu Tea, Gong Fu Martial Arts, the Gong Fu of playing the flute, or Gong Fu of making the bonsai in the Japanese. The Japanese see this as a sacred art. Any activity we do can become an art when we put our awareness into that activity or that action. So I just have been on this path of clarifying and resolving issues I'm seeing coming through the collective, which many of you may be confronted with daily. And I hear it through other light workers and star seeds about these conflicts coming up, about the problems amongst the communities, and with these teachings that I'll put out through my practices. Obviously, I put out other people's works too, because there might be something in there and their work and their art that I know will resonate with groups of people that come to this channel and they might do a better job at explaining using the words of the collective now and I'll do them justice. I, I like to share their teachings to assist all of you through this ascension process. So I'll put in my two cents based on my perception of over 30 years training with many masters and teachers and teaching a lineage, being a lineage holder. And these are in the Eastern philosophies. I've obviously studied Western philosophy too, through like Carl Jung and, you know, the Western religions, you know, Judaism, Christianity, this and that. But I always sought the freedom of experiential practice, such as the shamanic, the Buddhist, the Taoist. These are all about experiencing the divine, having the experience yourself instead of the dogma. The dogma never resonated with me. And the concepts such as being punished for beliefs, especially religious beliefs, such as the concept of going to hell for not believing a certain thing or believing something wrong. To me, that was always nonsense, which I know it is with most of you, but I still see it being projected into the field based on the comments I get and the comments on, comments on other people's work. And I'm not here to debate people. I don't care about being right. All I ever cared about was the truth and freedom. Knowing that this is a simulation we would call Maya. Maya from Sanskrit meaning illusion. We call now simulation or the matrix. The matrix evolved linguistically out of Maya. So when the ancients real, realized that they were in some kind of dream, some kind of illusion, some kind of simulation, they said, what do we do to free ourselves or awaken from this dream, from this simulated reality? And that's where the spiritual practices sprung out of. They manifest out of this question, this quest on how to free myself first. I have to experience myself to be able to teach others how to do it. And through the process, these arts came out of the Buddhist, the Hindu, the Taoist, people's deep desire to free themselves from the suffering and from the wheel of birth and death. They saw this, this reincarnation cycle based on perceiving nature and the recycling of the seasons and how nature is always 
following certain patterns and certain energies, and then through altered states of consciousness, through practices experiencing the non-physical realities, through things, dreaming practices, energy practices, and many other arts, realizing that all things, all practices, and the spiritual lead back to the same source. And they gave that source many names, and that na those names evolved, such as the unborn mind of Buddha, or God consciousness, Buddha consciousness, the body of Ra. We say the great mystery, that which is beyond all things, even beyond nothing, not a thing, beyond words, beyond all concepts. Now we use the concepts to guide us through the layers of programming, through the layers of forgetfulness, we could say, layers of consciousness. And each time we practice our spiritual arts, it's like peeling back a layer or thinning out the, the depth of separation or forgetfulness. See, with all these energies coming in, I forgot what I was going to say, but that's okay because in the end, there is no thing to remember. Just be here. Now, we'll get into today's first transmission from Celia Fenn. Today is 2222020, another powerful number sequence that closes out the series of two energy transits in February 2020. It is the only one that falls outside of Aquarius in the sign of Pisces. And by the two energy transits, I believe she's speaking of, where it's only twos and zeros in the, the date, just to try to clarify that, because obviously we have 22 22s coming up in the next seven days. And this one is the only one that falls outside of Aquarius in the sign of Pisces. It is the only one that adds up to 10 rather than 8. It is a new beginning of a new path. It gives us the opportunity to fully integrate the power shifts of 2019 and early 2020 by stepping into our queen or king energy. In the new earth, we return to the original path of the avatars Yeshua and Mary Magdalene and express our queen and king energies through royal service to the divine light. We live and express the highest energies of love and self-empowerment. To be royal means to be in service to the divine and to the community. As way showers, light warriors, and light workers, this is our mission as the journey of 2020 unfolds. May your, you wear your golden crown of Christ's light with dignity and grace. From Celia Fenn. And today, from Michael Love, the event, Planetary Liberation, moves into high gear. Pleiadian Light Forces Transmission 2222020, channeled by Michael Love for immediate planetary broadcast to the star seeds of Earth. Prelude. The following message is derived from etheric communications with Pleiadian light forces stationed in Earth's solar system and directly from key inside members of the Earth Alliance. We are honored to bring you this special Earth Alliance Dakota transmission, which comes directly from the Pleiadians. This transmission is based around recent meetings of the Galactics regarding the success and progress of the Grand Ascension of the citizens of planet Earth. A special team of Earth Alliance members spent over 120 hours decoding this etheric met transmission. We now bring you this angelic message of hope. Begin transmission, Great Ones. One Earth week ago, the Councils of Light stationed in Earth's solar system convened in special meetings to discuss Earth's current planetary liberation mission. It was unanimously established and decreed in these meetings that it was time for Operation Masterpiece, New Earth, to move into its accelerated f final phase in preparations for the Grand Event 2020 culmination. It was decided in these meetings to move planet Earth forward on the 5D Gamma timeline, one more notch and right on schedule. This quantum timeline shift showed up 11 Earth hours ago on the Schumann resonance graph as a blacked out space in Earth's energy field. This dimensional adjustment was an 8 hour durational event which lasted from 1.11 a.m. to 7.37 
a.m. Eastern Seaboard time in the early morning hours yesterday. So there we have, brothers and sisters, the 737, 73 into the 37. If you've been following this channel for a while, I talk about the 37 being earth, the 73 being heaven. 73 into 37 is heaven on earth, which we see as on earth as it is in heaven, meaning the external mirrors the internal. So the master teachers will say, seek ye the kingdom of heaven within yourself. We go within with the mind, with the heart, with the center to find that peace, that stillness, that beauty, the bliss, the bliss that is beyond the pain, that is beyond the suffering, calling you home, calling you on, urging you every step of the way. The guide is here to take you to that doorway, that inner doorway that leads you to heaven, the gateless gate, but it is up to you, Divine One, to step through that gate, that portal, fully awake, fully aware, into that inner conscious, or what people call the unconscious mind, or the unknowable mind of source. And we're doing that now. We're doing that through this ascension process, so that we can assist all of humanity to rise up, to ascend up into the higher planes, into the higher light, this is all symbolic, meaning manifesting our pure hearts, our pure awareness into this realm to transform it. We're not here to leave this realm. We're here to transform it into the manifestation of heaven's energy or the divine energy, the divine light, the clear light of bliss for all of consciousness to experience now, not in some future timeline, or some future date, but here now, eternally, bliss, consciousness. Back to the transmission. I went off on a tangent there. As these energies are coming in, it's constant downloads and constant activations now. That's why sometimes we take a break and just go into that stillness. Part of our meditation, our daily meditation practice. Become still. Go within. And it helps to be out in nature if you can in the process. Unplug and decompress. Here we go. <laughs> a powerful 40 hertz beam of gamma light was fired from this mission's primary Pleiadian craft docked in Earth's solar system towards the surface three hours before the shift. This gamma blast impacted the Earth at approximately 10.10 10 p.m. on 22... or... <laughs> 2-21-2020. I laugh because these as these energies are coming in, they want me, you know, the, the <laughs> guides and higher self are saying, there we go, there's the 1010 again. <laughs> I'm sure all of, most of you caught that. Uh, so I don't have to <laughs> announce every time <laughs> there's a synchronicity. So I, you know, we, we see what's going on here. So the the 2-21-2020, which is February 21st, 2020 at 10.10 p.m., showed up on the Schumann Resonance Graph as well, that gamma blast. Several other topics were discussed in this meeting, including the Grand Solar Flash, which is scheduled to impact planet Earth near the end of 2020. A special division of the forces of light, known as the Atlantis Command, joined forces with the Pleiadians some time ago and are working in huge advanced craft on special missions in the Orion star system on one of the primary stars there known as Alpha Orionis. This group is using advanced technology which will deflect the soon-to-be-released energy of Alpha Orionis combined with the excited energy of SGRA in the Sagittarius constellation towards planet Earth near the end of the Earth year 2020. When this grand solar flash is discharged, it will turn night into day and will be witnessed as a second sun in the sky, not for the period of hours or days, but for the long duration of a thousand years. The energy of these nuclear stars will be directed to Earth by light forces with incredible force at just the right moment, fully propelling everything in this cosmos, including planet Earth and its inhabitants, into the fifth dimension. 
Absolutely incredible things are happening right now on the surface of planet Earth and in the solar system. We know that you can feel the amazing transformation that is transpiring on Earth in your very soul and with every fiber of your being. The star seeds of Earth are programmed to know just before the grand event culmination triggers and there is this great knowing that something big is imminent. Angelic forces have descended onto this planet from every corner of the cosmos, and light is filling every dark space of this cosmos. A new day is dawning, something is coming just over the horizon that is so grand, even the great prophets of old could not fully describe it. The 2020 Stargate. As we said in several months ago, the effects of major planetary Stargate set to open in April 2020, will be felt by the starseeds of Earth as early as 2-20-2020. In April 2020, the grand alignment of Pluto and Jupiter conjunct will occur, which will cause a complete compression breakthrough on the surface and its precursor of the grand solar flash of 2020. The energy of the 2020 stargate is starting to already be noticed by many light beings on Earth. A complex mixture of exotic and solar energies are impacting Earth right now. In conjunction with all the powerful incoming cosmic rays, solar winds are also blasting the Earth at the moment and the magnetosphere is taking a pounding at super high vibrational light bombarding planet Earth. What are the effects of these high frequency energies coming into Earth's atmosphere? These are high vibrational 5D energies, so the effects are absolutely wonderful and blissful and very positive energies. The may Main thing you will notice if you are resonating with the energies that are present now on Earth is that the floodgates will burst open and abundance will begin manifesting all around you from many angles. Things that didn't work out before will all of a sudden just work out now. Everything that has been stuck or on energetic hold will simply work itself out all at once. That's what happens in 5D. All things work successfully all at once. You will begin experiencing success on many levels all at once, is what we are saying. It sounds pretty amazing, but it's true, and if you are in alignment, you will have already noticed this. We are not bragging at all, but we sure noticed it. Dare one as the grand event culmination 2020 draws closer. Light forces have strengthened their planetary missions, and these new mission plans are already being carried out fast and with advanced divine precision. Things are already changing on Earth, and the changes will be more and more positive, will come quicker and more noticeable now. An important note here, some will say and ask, things are still not so bright for me, so did I get left behind? Not quite, we say, but we do say, come on up just a bit higher. The new Earth does not replace the old Earth. The new Earth exists at the same time and in the same place as the old Earth. However, it exists on a higher vibrational plane. The outward experience you are having right now depends solely on which one of these two Earths you are resonating with. If things still are not as wonderful as you imagine, simply raise your vibration and you will see what we mean. Know that everyone makes it to the new Earth in good time, and all is as it should be. On the old Earth, fear is still dominant, as always, and if one feeds into that vibration, that is what they will experience. When the ancient Lemurians and the Atlanteans were here, they had to leave this planet due to the darkness, fear that came here in those days, and the enlightened star seeds of Earth here in the now moment are doing the same thing. We are leaving the old Earth and taking up residence on our new 5D Earth planet. Many of us have already left the old world and it is becoming but a faint memory. As part of the accelerated activity that started a few days ago, a major sequence of events and synchronicities have been set in motion. One reason things sped up and got lighter over the last few hours and days is because a major treaty with certain ETs and the U.S. government just ended and the contract is now void. Delta forces are now completely removing every trace of darkness from this realm on a planetary scale that has never experienced before. The global financial system is rapidly being transformed behind the scenes right now as well, as the old debt-based economy is being phased out and the new quantum abundance system is taking its place. The tank in world financial markets the last two days is part of this old system phase-out. 
gold hit a historical record high this very day because the beings of Earth are waking up in record numbers and are val valuing solidity at this time more than the old fiat debt currencies. Many starseeds are having intense dreams and visions of our galactic family, their amazing craft, and many are having stronger visions of the coming solar flash. These visions and dreams are becoming are being sent directly to the starseeds of Earth so that they can share with others what lies ahead. As we move forward, these visions and dreams will become even stronger and become more widespread. Be sure to let us know if you are seeing what is to come just over the horizon. The world needs to hear your story. The great time has arrived and over the coming days and weeks you shall see many more magnificent and positive things begin to occur on planet Earth. Operation Masterpiece has been a grand success to this point, Great One, and as light forces now move into high gear, get ready for the final big ride of a lifetime. The Galactics are working overtime to make all of this a grand success. The Great Ones have come from every corner of the universe to witness this grand event, and they are giving you the last push needed to help you take your place as cosmic citizens. Together, we are shifting this world back into the paradise it was always meant to be. Excellent work, Great One. Be very proud of your magnificent achievements. Thank you for coming to Earth and for your great service to all of humanity. From Godspeed, Michael and the Pleiadians from 5DEarthProject.com. So those of you that listened to yesterday's transmission, I told a short story about going to the lake in the afternoon yesterday and experiencing that flash, that whiteout. As I went into a meditative state, I went totally into that void. It was like a blackout, kind of like on the Schumann we, we experienced. And it was around 1.44 p.m. It's now 7.44 p.m., the 7.44 coming through. And I experienced yesterday on 2.21.2020, as I came out of the void, this blinding flash of white light. It lasted several seconds, but it was a massive activation that occurred. So many of you are going to be experiencing this. At the end of today's transmission, I'm going to tell you several things uh, that you can do to assist your physical vessel um, through these great changes and some of the things that are to help you with what people are calling the ascension symptoms, different things that are going on in our physical body to assist with the mental, emotional, and metaphysical aspects of our consciousness. Now today from the Zolkin Times, Kin 25, Red Self-Existing Serpent. Self-existing is the name for the number four, and its keywords are define, measure, and form. The fourth day of any wave spell is about definition, looking at the path you are on, and finer detail. Take measure so you can be more accurately proceed. Today is Red Serpent, and keywords associated with it are instinct, survival, and life force. Serpent reminds us that we can heal ourselves. Imagine you are shedding your old skin and with it all your negativity too. You'll emerge renewed and refreshed. This ability to heal itself in this way is why the serpent has long been a symbol of medicine. When you combine the meaning of the number in the day, the result is defined to survive. To summarize, today is about looking at the details, reading the small print, get all your facts straight before you move forward. The serpent is very sensitive to what is going on. This suggests that new information will come to light, which will help a great deal. And from Christina Papa Giorgio, Red, Self-Existing Serpent, Kin 225, 4, Chikchan, 22 February 2020, 22222, 5D Gateway, The Power of Life Force, 222220. 22 to 22, 4 to 4 equal 10 equal 1, 22 master builder architect of peace, 2 partnership cooperation twin souls, 4 form foundation angelic earth, 10 manifestation authority power, 1 leadership new beginnings original, kin 225 equal 22 5, Coding repeated for building new earth. 
225 equal 9, destiny, service, compassion, grace, and closure. Another hugely significant evolutionary milestone as we continue to build our peace-filled foundation for new earth, a better life, and a better earth. Today is day four in the wave spell of Ish, the white wind who holds the power of spirit, where we are becoming hollow vessels for spirit to communicate and work through our being. Today we are honing, fine-tuning, and redefining our personal and planetary kundalini channels to allow for greater conductivity for the breath of spirit to flow through our vessels. Planetary Grid Update Spirit has forewarned me many months ago as to the powerful significance of this date and these extraordinary codes. Following up from the 13 January 2020, Red Electric Serpent, Day, Solar Umbilical Cord, Saturn, Pluto, Mercury Conjunction, and 2 February 2020, 2222 Gate, Red Planetary Serpent, Day, Today's code, red, self-existing serpent, completes the trinity of the planetary serpentine energies in the creation and formation of our new planetary grid. Our planetary serpents, the feminine rainbow serpent and the feathered, plumed certain serpent, Quetzalcoatl, are entwined in their continuing dance as we fine-tune the crafting of this new grid which is like upgrading from old rusted copper wires to the new translucent fiber optic cables capable of holding a much higher voltage. It now has much greater and more efficient conductivity too. Our planetary grid is now holding higher frequencies of rainbow plasma flowing through the meridians and the arteries from the cosmic infusions entering through the beams transmitted to the apex of all our reawakened and reactivated pyramids, sacred sites, temples, and vortices. They can now carry a more refined frequency of God light, the God codes, carried through the breath of spirit, blowing out the old cobwebs and creating space for the new life, magic, and miracles to flow through our planet. Note, with this voltage upgrade, keep an eye on the volcanic activity and also the Quetzalcoatl pyramids of Chichen Itza, Teotihuacan, and Cholula, the trinity of the feathered serpent, which will be fully communicating and networking with the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. It is noteworthy to mention that the largest pyramid in Mexico is not at Teotihuacan, but at Cholula, where the Great Pyramid of Cholula stands, covered in vegetation, and topped by a church built by the Spanish. The Bosnian Pyramid, 220 meters, is over one-third greater than the Egyptian Cheops Pyramid, 139 meters, but the Cholula Pyramid is double the height of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun at 450 meters, most likely the largest pyramid built on Earth. The Great Pyramid of Cholula, also known as Tuatlepeleco, Nahuatl for made by Hand Mountain, I did my best with that one, <laughs> is a huge complex located in Cholula, Puebla, Mexico. It is the largest archaeological site of a pyramid, temple in the New World, as well as the largest pyramid known to exist in the world today. The pyramid stands 55 meters, 180 feet, above the surrounding plain, and in its final form is measured 450 by 450 meters, 1,480 by 1,480 feet. The pyramid is a temple that traditionally has been viewed as having been dedicated to the god Quetzalcoatl. The huge pyramid, the largest on earth, is now online and fully connected to the new grid. Woot woot, up and firing, all engines on, god power. It is also potent to note that as well as Red Serpent Energies, we have the higher guide of Red Dragon today. As Quetzalcoatl is a feathered serpent, he is often associated with the form and mythology of a dragon, and hence the ley lines are often referred to as dragon lines. So we have both serpent and dragon energies very active and prevalent today, awakening and upgrading as re we redefine, polish, and hone our powerful new superhighway. We have just evolved from landline phones to telepathic communications throughout space-time. 
God, Wi-Fi is switched on and transmitting. So precious hearts, today we break out of our old box and define a new paradigm as ordained by Mother, Father, God. Now is the time to move to a bigger paradoxical box. Today's question is how can I define and birth a higher God-coded foundation for our new reality? Divine blessings for upgrading our grids to optimum God power. And the image in today's video is Dawn Song by Even Dawn, which is a lot of symbolism in this image. We have the feathered serpent, the two coming together, creating the heart around earth, the Merkaba in the middle, the diamond with the kundalini and the flower of life around it. Very powerful image. So you can meditate on that image. And the face of these two serpents look like dolphins to me. And we have the purple and the pinks and the violet and all the colors of the rainbow bridge coming through. Kin 225, red, self existing serpent, the power of life force. The mantra, the code for today is. I define in order to survive. Measuring instinct, I seal the store of life force. With the self-existing tone of form, I am guided by the power of birth. Really feel into that energy, the power of birthing, the new reality, the new earth, new Jeru Salem, the home of divinity, the garden of Eden, here now for all eternity. So real quick before we end, a few things that you can do to assist your physical vessel, some of them being being amongst water with these divine feminine energies. So taking a bath, you can take a bath in sea salt or use Epsom salt, which is magnesium sulfate. Magnesium helps relax the muscles, relax the nervous system, and you could use aromatherapy you know, play some soft music, light a candle, use some lavender, chamomile, your favorite incense, and soak in a hot bath with Epsom salt or sea salt. That helps pull out toxins. If, you, if you're in a deep state of imbalance, what you could do is take a hot bath, uh, two cup apple cider vinegar, with two cups of baking soda that'll pull any toxins out of the body through the skin, through your pores. But don't sit in the bath for more than 20 minutes. Anything over 20 minutes, you could start absorbing them back into the body. So that's a powerful detox, a 20-minute bath. You can also swim in water. The best is obviously natural water, a natural spring-fed pool of water, like a hot spring or a natural spring, it could be the ocean, a lake, a natural lake. But bathing in water, it could be a pool or a hot tub. What I also recommend if you have access to is if you can go into what is called a flotation tank or a sensory deprivation chamber where you float in high salinity, usually Epsom salt. I built one when I was about in my early 20s and I used it for six to eight years, six, seven years, where you float in pitch black, and it's very relaxing. It's good for the body. People use them to recover from injuries. Also, if you have access to a hyperbaric chamber, that floods the body with oxygen, because as these changes happen, as we become more crystalline, silica-based, we need the more oxygen. So we're getting this through many uh, means, slow, deep breath. Also, supplementation. At night uh, before bed, taking a magnesium calcium supplement with a vitamin C helps relax, calm the nervous system, relax the muscles. I take something that's a two to one ratio. For example, if it's 500 milligrams of magnesium, 250 calcium, that's something you could research. Some are one to one, some are two to one. Uh, we get more calcium in our diet than magnesium. So unless if you're eating a whole head of broccoli every day, then you probably need more magnesium uh, than what you're currently taking. Mornings, you can drink uh, water, fresh water, eight ounces with half a lemon fresh squeezed on an empty stomach that helps alkalize. There's many things you can do. Um, also D3 with K2. 
There's many benefits to those supplements. And obviously cutting out processed foods as much as you can and eating more whole foods, organic if you can. Obviously meditating, going out to nature, being amongst the trees, in the sun, in the waters. All these things will be of great benefit to the physical vessel as you're going through these ascension energies. So thank you for joining me today, beloved beings of light. Let us know in the comments below what you're experiencing, what you're feeling, what you're seeing, your visions. Let the other light workers and way showers, warriors of light, know if, if you're experiencing any of the what we talked about in the video today in this transmission with the event energies coming in. Let us know your visions, what you're seeing, the synchronicities. This helps benefit the collective and those that come to this channel to see that others are experiencing the same thing as they are. So I appreciate appreciate all of you that are uh, supporting this channel, my work. Uh, thank you for sharing these videos and for your comments and for the thumbs up. All these things help bring these transmissions to a bigger audience, to more minds, to more consciousness in this realm. So I appreciate you all. Keep shining your light brightly into the night. And if you're new to the channel, while you're shining your light, be sure to subscribe and click the subscribe button under the video. Some people new to YouTube and uh, these transmissions, it helps them to know that they can do that. And then it'll show up under your news feed or whatever they call it, timeline or you know, you can click on the left under subscriptions and you'll see people that you subscribe to come up in that list. And the little bell, when you click on it, you'll receive notifications from YouTube when we do our new um, upload for the day. And I try to do these every day, these transmissions, one a day. With all the information and energy coming in, it's hard to keep up with everything that's going on in the field. So have a beautiful and blessed day. 8 8 just came through. It is 8.08 p.m. as we end today's transmission. I love you all. Namaste.